Yep, very important. Good job. <coughs> so here is your guys's um, test and stuff. So that's good. The first things you'll notice is he gives you all the chemical reactions on the very front page. You'll be given, you should be given all the chemical reactions. All of this stuff right here should be given to you guys. So all of this stuff will be given to you, which is nice, right? Which just means some, you're not gonna have to ever guess the chemical reaction. There's gonna be a lot of weird ones, right? But if you're ever lost, just come back here and find one very similar. He also, he also tells you if it's Markovnikov, or antimicrobial, right? And if what type of serial chemistry is going, going to impose, right? That's nice. So, there you go. Um, I did some research. Antimicrobial is usually to cause stereoisomers, right? So, just know antimicrobial is usually to cause stereoisomers, and mainly he likes to make them cause racemic mixtures. So, it's going to be equal parts RS, RS. Um, also, because Grubbs is an asshole, which I don't care if he knows that or not, he knows that. Um, anytime we have a chiral molecule, we're going to have to show stereochemistry. So we got to be able to find that. So, there we go. Like, for example, chiral, 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 and such. But there we go. So I'm going to come back up here every once in a while, but we're going to look at this guy first. So select the cation, which is most likely not an intermediate form of the following reaction. Keyword is not. So we have, it looks like a double bond is here, and that's what it looks like at least, and we're adding H2SO four. So what is H2SO4? What is that? An acid. What's an acid going to do? Right, give a hydrogen away. There's your leaving group right there. That OH is going to get converted into water, which is going to leave. So it's going to leave. So you're going to get a positive charge right there on that carbon. Correct? So Let's see which one of these is not a good cation. Is he happy? Is he on a tertiary? Good. He was on a secondary here and became a tertiary here. How do you move? How do you move from secondary to tertiary? There's three ways. A methyl shift, hydrogen shift, and lastly, it's a methylene shift, which I learned last night, methylene is when you open and close a ring, okay. right? So do you see how we form two rings here? A methylene shift is going to occur. That's all a methylene shift is. So you're going to either open up or form a ring. You usually only open up a ring to form a more stable ring. You usually close a ring to form a stable ring, correct? What is the most stable cyclostructure? What is it? Yep, cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is the most stable. Followed by heptane and then pentane. Yep, then it was octane, yep. Propane and butane are not stable. They literally do not want to exist. They would rather be in line dot non-condensed cyclostructure, which is why when your cousin runs around with a butane torch and can set things on fire, which just basically means hairspray. That's all a butane is, which is what my cousin did this Thanksgiving. He said set, he set the whole backyard on fire. I did tell him you could make a flamethrower. I just thought his parents would watch him and not give him hairspray. But yeah. So. A is the correct answer because it's stable. What about B? Is B stable? That's an example of a methylene shift, correct? So it's also tertiary, so that's stable, correct? Good. What about right here? Is that kind of stable? 
kind of happy or no? I'm guessing yes. Or it's a negative charge. Nope, that's a negative charge. That one is wrong because you would get a positive charge if water left, correct? So when water forms, it's positively charged. It's going to want to break its bond with carbon to hear that positive charge, imposing the cation on the carbon, right? So I'm guessing this guy right here is a negative charge. I'm guessing, I don't know, because it's basically this guy, but not doing anything. It's wrong because either it's a negative charge or it's a positive charge, charge which could be the air, because technically it wants to be on a carbon like that, but it's not too happy. Make sense? Okay. D, this could be an intermediate. The water just hasn't left just yet, correct? So it's a step. We usually ignore it, but it is an intermediate. The only one is left is E. So what's going on here is we did a methyl shift, right? One of the methyl groups right there, for example, came down and did not exchange places with the positive charge. When you do a methyl shift, the methyl and the positive switch. Here, it did not. Does that make sense? That's why E is the right answer, because it's wrong. The positive charge did not move there. Look at, confusing you, look at A and E. Positive charge moved because a methyl shift occurred. And E, a methyl shift occurred, the positive charge did not move. Does that kind of make sense? Zoomies, how are you doing? I'm gonna assume everyone's good because no one's yelling at me. Cool. Oh, there's someone else's email. Yep, Allison, I just got your email. Thank you. I love the white pie and in right here. It's great. Okay. We are on number two. Can you guys in Zoom hear me? So I'm gonna just say yes or no in the chat. Yes. Cool, thank you. Awesome. Okay, number two. Okay. Which brief statement most accurately describes alkene reactivity? So what are stronger, single bonds or double bonds? Double bonds are stronger, right? There's two bonds there, it's twice as strong. This guy is wrong. <clears throat> the pi bonds are attacked by nucleophiles. Yes or no? Every time we have a double bond, correct? The bond itself is what breaks and forms the negative and positive charge, right? The nucleophile itself doesn't attack it, right? It actually helps form it by removing a hydrogen, correct? So it doesn't uh, get attacked, it is created by that. Dull bonds are stable or unstable? Which ones? They're stable, right? What's the most stable structure in all chemistry? Benzene ring. It's composed of only double bonds, correct? The most stable structure. So the other ones are extremely stable. Again, if you want to piss Grubbs off, draw your benzenes like that. He hates it. He absolutely hates it with passion. I used to make him mad on purpose by doing this. So, everyone piss Grubbs off. There you go. Last exam, or if you want to make them like cards or something, Christmas cards, just draw those all over. Or make like snowflakes that look like that. So, this one is true. A pi bond is lost and a stronger sigma bond is gained. Welcome back, Allison. Yeah. 
So when a bond, double bond is broken, broken, goes away, you get a positive and negative charge, correct? But they're like a magnet, right? Positive and negative charge are attracted to each other, correct? So technically, there is no double bond. I just broke a double bond, correct? But this sigma, the initial bond, is actually stronger temporarily um, when both positive and negative charge are near each other because it's pulled closer to each other until it reacts. Make sense? So that's what's going on in there. So that's why that statement is true. So we have these two structure, right? So when a double bond breaks, what forms? A carbocation and a anion, right? Carbo anion, both form. Let's draw this guy out. So boom, he's attracted to that guy, correct? And then over here, these are methyl groups. Double bond. C H C H three. If I were to destroy this double bond right here, where would the positive charge want to go? To the tertiary or to the, or to the secondary? Tertiary. It would be. The positive charge would want to go here. Well, you wouldn't know, right? In theory, because it attaches to the secondary right there, it has to be anti Makovnikov. So what I just drew down here is how Makovnikov would work. It works as we normally think, right? Carbocation goes to the most substituted, it's happy, right? Anti works backwards. What an anti would do, let me draw it in the opposite, which would be the green. This would be negative, oops. The negative charge would actually go here, and the positive charge would go here. So if you see that right there, we know this right here is anti Makovnikov because it's attaching there. Well, it's anti Makovnikov because the because the, the nucleophile is attaching to the least substituting. Because positive charges want to be on the most substitute, right? The positive charge wants to be here. That's my carbon cost. Anti carbon cost is the opposite, where the positive charge goes to the least substitute. You can memorize it based off the way, like hydrogens, for example, like my carbon cost, it wants to go to the one with the fewest amount of hydrogens, right? Anti is the one with the most. There is no hydrogen, hydrogens here. There's a lot of hydrogens here, theoretically, right? I don't like that definition because you can confuse hydrogens between both of them, right? So I choose which one makes sense, right? Positive goes to the most substituted, negative goes to the least substituted, while anti is the exact opposite, where negative will go to the one that makes it the least happy, positive with the one who makes it the least happy, happy because it's anti. I just It will, yeah. The negative is still one when it go, right? But where the positive and negative charge goes is what makes it anti or not. That's what kind of goes on there. <laughs> so you guys probably figured out which one is it? Between all these guys, which one is the answer? What do you guys think? It is. Good job. Why? Good, you would. This doesn't make any sense because that wouldn't make an OH, right? This is an acid, that wouldn't work. So it's between A and B. Water is an example of anti. And alcohol, straight up by itself, is Makovnikov. It's going to want to attach to the carbocation when the carbocation is happiest, correct? 
water is going to be an anti and we're at the use a base to pull it off. That kind of makes some sense? Okay, in there? Cool. Make sense to you too? Zoomies? Make sense? Yep. Cool. So HBr is going to break apart, and you're going to get positive H and an R, a negative Br. Good. This guy right here is going to break, and we can look at the very top actually, and we can see HBr with nothing by itself is Markovnikov. That's nice. So this guy by itself is Makarnikov. So we can assume everything works out where it should. The positive charge comes here, negative charge goes there as that bond is gone. D, D is basically two hydrogens. But we treat D as its own element. It's really weird. It's treated as an H, but it's also given more priority than a normal H. So it's two H's that are bond together, then form a bond. It's weird. Just treat D like an H, but just know it's its own little thing. It's kind of annoying. Okay. So the bromine is going to attach here. The positive is going to attach here. So you would get bromine and you would get D. Good. I'm not done yet though. That's one product, correct? Is there any chiral molecules here? Yes or no? Chiral right there. That center ring right there is chiral. Correct? So it's chiral, which means if you look at the very top, I believe HBR can form cis and trans, right? The possibility. Um, in this case, it will. It's in a form of semic mixtures. So you're going to get. Both possible, possible, possibilities, right? Where Br is going to be the same place, but be a wedge or be a dash. Correct? Make sense? Those are your two possibilities for Br. D can also change as well, right? You can give D a wedge or a dash. And that's going to affect stereochemistry as well, right? Or D can be a wedge or a dash by itself. Cool. So that's your stereoisomers. So we get racemic mentors where B is there, D is there. I just don't know where the last one comes in because right now I have five. There's technically six. Um, oh, that's what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, this is the weird one, but technically we can go on here. The ring can close, makes a hexene, hexene and the D and BR can be there. That's one, usually doesn't occur, but a product like that can occur, right? We can do a methylene shift to make that occur. It's not going to happen, but it's a possibility. That's why there's six. These ones are the common one. It's this guy right here is a bit weird. 
because we know there's six carbons in the chain, it can close on itself. So it would close on itself, make that structure occur, and then be our world attach. So, yeah. No formula kind of makes sense? That's what it's kind of part. It's weird to think about, but he just wants you to know that stereoisomers usually will form racemic mixtures. So you will get two products in each one. Zoomies. So that first product where the BR doesn't have a wedge or a dash, like that's that is a possibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm counting it. I'm counting that one as one because technically if there is nothing down here, this right here could be an answer. If he puts anything down here, it turns into an anti Markovnikov, which is what the other ones come into play. He said his answer key says six, right? So my pro my idea is that he probably had a product there, or is assuming you guys know products that could occur from this reaction. Yeah, I know. It's very annoying. I doubt a question like this will appear on the exam. It would take way too long. And this involves a lot of drawing, right? You guys are in Tesmos, a little less drawing than previous years because you were given a test sheet and you were graded based off your drawings, right? So you could get like bonus points. It would be. That's why it's worth five points, right? Because he would great if you got any of them correct, any of the drawings correct, he would give you a bonus point. So that's probably why this one wouldn't appear. So I'm doing this right here because it's good to see the hardest questions he could ask. But I'd probably go over the alkene review way more than this because he's probably going to pull questions from the alkene review. Just going over this as it's more practice, you guys can get some questions done. Okay. So which which will make a pair of diastereomers? Okay. So what's a diastereomer? Diastereomer. What is that? What? But not mirror images, not so disposable. And how many stereo isomers do they have? They have two chiral centers, right? So that's dot. Yeah, there we go. So I'm trying to get at. Okay. Here's an issue. Cyclic, cyclic structures, like uh, these guys are here, very, very hard to get um, diastereomers, diastereomers on. Right? Because what's going to happen with this guy, all right, you can have a positive charge here, for example, and let's attach like an alcohol, alcohol group. How many, how many, stere, how many, stere, blah, 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 blah. how many stereo centers would this guy have? But that kind of stereo center right here. The alcohol group is there. Yes or no? It wouldn't because CH2 and CH2 are right there pretty much, right? So that could that wouldn't count, correct? So it wouldn't work. So we can already eliminate three and four, right? As just things because they're cyclic. And cyclic structures are very hard to get things on. But we can also can eliminate this guy, H2 PDC, unless you have tons of branches on it, like right? both branching on both sides of the double bond, right? There's branching on both, then you get zero chemistry. But there isn't, this is achiral. Almost always achiral, unless there's lots of branching on the double bond. We don't see that, right? There is no branching on both sides, only one branch. So it's gonna form an achiral structure. So three, oh, sorry, four is out. Good. Yeah. 
about this guy right here? What does he form? I don't know. Let's go look it up. BCH3. Right here. Antimicrobial cis. Right? Boom, boom. He would form a guy right here and a guy right here. Let's erase this. This is exactly what our structure looks like, right? Yep, exactly what it looks like. And it would be cis. Right? All addition is we have cyclopropane, not cyclohexane. It's a little bit different. So if we go look at this, right? Go back down to our question here. The bond breaks, you get a wedge hydrogen, the guy turns to a dash, and you get a dash OH. Is this considered cyclic? Yes or no? Well, you would get diastamers, diastamers, correct? But you wouldn't get exactly everything. Reason being, this right here is anti Makovikov, right? Oops, easy. So anti Makovikov usually forms um, racemic mixtures. So that's why it can be diastamer because it's a racemic mixture. Racemic mixtures are their own thing. Okay. Uh, good. This guy right here is one of the other options we have. See how he formed, he's not, he's not anti Makovikov or Makovikov, so he can work. So that's what one is. So one works. And then. This is the second one we have. He's not anti Makovikov either, so he works. So one and two work because they're not anti, they don't form racemic mixtures. So wrong, wrong, right, right. Because they're going to form diastereomers. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to teach you how to use resources that are very taught. That's the best way of approaching this question is to look, right? Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Or if you guys have any questions, I can show you more about this question. Question. I can see a question like this pop up in the exam because it doesn't require drawing and it gives you basically all the answers in the first part of the quiz, right? So I can see that popping up. So I would probably study this one and just know how to reference the top sheet and what the top sheet tells you. Make sense? Okay, zoomies. So is it safe to say that if it's a cyclic structure, then it's not gonna? Unless it's hexane. Cyclohexane is a very, one of the very few cyclic structures that can form diastamer safely. Okay. That's so safe, stable, right? So. There we go. Yeah. We notice all the structures up here, whoopsie daisy, are all cyclo, cyclo, right? They're all cyclohexane. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, mercury, TH4, BH3. What's going to happen here? Let's go see. It's even mentioned. Uh, kinda. Kinda. He's mixing. He's mixing chemicals up. Of course he is. He's bastard. Okay. Uh, it will see TH4, BH3. Kind of like this one. Only difference is ROH. Okay. And 
is you have TA somewhere, TS, THS, yes, right there. Ugh. This one's not gonna help. Yeah. I don't want to help us, but it's not. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. So you gotta figure out the major major product. If you notice, half the answers are making rings. Correct? That tells us something. Something's gonna come really weird. It's gonna occur. We're gonna close a ring up, right? You can just tell that because this guy right here usually makes a ring close. This is what he does. Right, this guy right here is going to donate a hydrogen. Oh, he's sorry, he's gonna steal a hydrogen because he's negative. All right, he's negative charge, so he's going he's going to want to give no. He wants to give sorry, he wants to give away a hydrogen. He wants a hydrogen. And he wants a hydrogen because he wants to form a bond. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So. First things first, count many carbons we have here. We have four carbons, right? What's wrong with A? You have five. Are there any carbons in any of these structures right here? Yes or no? In my reaction, are there any carbons? Yes or no? No, there is no carbons here. That's mercury. That right there is an element. That right there is there none. There is none. There's no like methyl groups that will break off, right? There's no methyl groups that'll be donated, so you can't get any bigger. So A is wrong. What's gonna happen there? Okay. C is the odd man out, which makes it wrong immediately. Test taking skill, the one that looks completely different, is always wrong. Make sense? The answer is always going to be between two very similar ones. Two very similar ones. Make sense? And the very similar ones are A, B, D, and E. So that one's wrong. Yeah. Ugh. So we notice that we make cyclope uh, cyclopentane, cyclopentane, cyclopentane. Good. How many carbons are here? One, two, three, four. How many carbons are there? Five, right? That also has an additional carbon. No go. So that one's also wrong. We got additional carbon from somewhere that made no sense. Can I see that? Cool. Now between B and E. When this bond breaks, the double bond breaks, right? We're gonna put a positive charge on one and negative charge on another one, correct? And it's gonna depend if it's anti-Makarnikov, Makarnikov or Makarnikov, correct? So let's see. So there's nothing one just like it above. So we're going to still look and see. Closest one we have is we have this guy right here, and we look like we have this guy right here. Correct. Those two are very similar to each other. Can we have anyone else that has anything like that? Yeah. Cool. So. It is the THF that makes it anti Markovnikov, right? Because we look at these, these three right here, these three right here, you notice the only anti is the one that has the THF. It's that THF that makes it anti. 
because everything else reappears otherwise, right? Water appears, appears, appears. So it's a THF that makes it anti. So now we know that. We can I'm not 100% sure, but it could be the peroxide. That is a possibility. The THF is also there. I know THF, he loves THF because it will close a ring up. So I'm going to show you guys. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys the easy way, not the super complicated way. But yeah. So, boom. So I was trying to get up because we're between B and E, right? Okay. Actually, yeah, that's how it would work. That's very annoying. Actually, it is Makarovikov, not anti. That is my bad. Ugh. Go away. Okay. So sorry, this is Makarovikov. The positive charge, we'll go here, negative charge here. You're correct. It's the uh, peroxide that makes it anti. My bad. My notes are messed up. Because there's no peroxide. So negative charge will go here. Positive charge will go here. Yeah. The THF makes the ring close. It does this by forcing the oxygen Oxygen, the lone pair on the oxygen to go by bind to the positive charge. Where is that located? Right there. It's going to close its ring. So if you look at this, right, the ring is going to close. So one, two, three, four. So let's just draw a bond to the oxygen, oxygen, and then draw a four carbon, four carbons, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Those are your four bonds. I, and it's not the picture perfect, picture, picture, picture perfect, technically. Oops, it's too big. Oxygen would be here, it's bond. Kind of like that, which means E is the right answer. So E is the answer because it's Markovikov. D would be the D would be the answer if it was anti. If the positive charge was on this guy instead, right? The oxygen would form here, form bond here, and then make the cyclic structure. That's what would happen. So, since this guy's Makovnikov, it forms E, not B. You guys look completely lost. Okay. Zoomies. When it's Markovnikov, the positive charge will go to the more substituted carbon. Yep, where it's more stable. Yes. Yeah. Work. You, you, you want me to do that to you. That's why you want to work. So I'm trying to keep you on track. Don't yell at me. I'm doing what you told me to do. Okay. You just gave me a look. I know the look means. I look all the time. Emily just looks at me every day. Good, but it's true. Same. Yeah, number seven. Fun times. Ugh. Yes. 
you kind of So number seven, we're gonna look back up at the yard, little guys up here. And we're gonna look at this guy right here. So when this guy curves, it's going to split the ring up. It's going to destroy this bond, basically. And anywhere that was any carbon that was connecting the double bond, it's going to add a double bonded O, basically. Okay, that makes some sense. That's what this guy right here does. So the O of three basically does. So go down here. Let me see the O of three right here. So we're going to destroy where bonds are located. So that bond right there gets destroyed. So this is what the molecule is going to look something like. Then H is gonna be here. And then right here, this bond is destroyed. And you're going to separate that. So this guy is formed because that bond, the double bond I destroyed, this guy right here, forms that guy. So you're gonna get a methyl and you're gonna get a weird double bond right there. So that's what happens with number seven. Okay. So what structure looks a lot like the guy I, ooh, he formed a double bond? He would, he would form right there. Double bond O, right there, right there. I think you messed up, so I wouldn't do that. Okay, but a structure close to this, right? So this guy is gonna be how many carbons? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Nope. Miss that. Miss a carbon. One, two. Yeah, carbon right there. So nine, nine. So all carbons have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still on nine, nine carbons. So that strategy doesn't work. <clears throat> Which one of them? out of the five is completely different than the rest. D, so D is not the right, right answer because it's completely odd looking, right? Just test taking scale. Don't pick that one if it's odd. Okay. Second thing, it needs to have this C-like structure because the double bond was inside the ring. So that's what the C-like structure is there. So that happens there. And then we want this double bonded O connected to a methyl right here. We want that structure. This doesn't have that right there. It would not work, right? So E is out because no methyl is attached to the last little tiny tail that I drew right here where it came from this guy right here. That guy should be right there, which is not there. It's a very visual problem. I know, I don't like it, I hate it, but E's also different because of that. Because there's your tail, there's your tail, and there's your tail. Second thing is, which is there, which is there, makes sense, cool. Um, I'm 
trying to how to narrow it down. It would not be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would, but the problem being, but here the problem here is when that bond breaks, right? This carbon right here is exposed. It has a bunch of hydrogen, correct? So when a double bond occurs, it has room for an out an H to a H to H to attach to, right? That's why you would get carboxylic acid. Here, that carbon, right, or that carbon right there, with double bond O attaches attaches. There's no place for a hydrogen to also attach. That's why it doesn't form a carboxylic acid right there. Because it's not a primary. This guy makes primary carbons turn into carboxylic acids. Every other carbon turns into just a, a ketone. So, but you're correct. Yeah, that's why. Um, so that guy should not be down, he should be up. So C is the answer. Because B is different. So yeah. So it's the same general shape. B for some reason is a different form. Everything is kind of turned around and kind of contorted into itself. So because do these delete will these double bonds want to be next to each other? Yes or no? These double bond oxygens are here. Will these two highly electronegative molecules want to be next to each other? Yes or no? Yep, so they're going to repel each other. That's why B is wrong. That's why C is the answer. So that's why. Because the methyl group was on top in our diagram. And in A, the methyl group is down below. So it rotated. And it, uh, this, this compound, this mixture right here, would not rotate anything. It keeps it the same structure, just adds oxygen. Yep. Everyone okay? Zoomies? I'm good. Okay. Move it on. Move it on. Number eight. Eight. How many arrows are needed for this reaction? Okay. So he's nice enough to show us what the structure happens here. Okay. So what do I form as a product? What is formed down here? Water. I'm reacting with OH. So this guy right here has to act like an acid. Where's the most acidic hydrogen? It's this guy right there. So the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks. Oxygen gets the lone pairs. That's why it's negative. That's why it forms a negative charge, right? And then the hydrogen is going to react with that right there forming that. So before I erase all the squares and everything and all the arrows, how many arrows do you see? Two. So the first reaction, first step has two arrows. <clears throat> Here, there we go. We have two eyes here. One of the eyes takes all the electrons, making the one positive. Right? And then it's going to use, actually, yeah, it would. It's very annoying. Yeah. And then electrons from the double bond would react with the positive. 
and then one of the bonds here is going to act with here. That's how we get this guy right there. So technically, there are three arrows here to form that nice, weird looking triangle thing. This making sense so far? Okay. Switch to lime green. Lastly, we are here. So, what occurs? This iodine is positive. How would it lose its positivity? It would break a bond, take the electrons, right? Making it now neutral, correct? That's why it lost a bond here. It was a triangle, now it's just a single bond, right? So that's one arrow, yeah? Okay, now that a bond is broken, this carbon right here is slightly positive. I'm gonna use actually a blue so you guys can see it. Positive charge right there. Are there any negative structure? I have two, right? The iodine or the O. The iodine doesn't pop up there. So this iodine right here disappeared. That O though will be attracted to the positive. So it's gonna to rotate the carbon and move it over a little slightly. And that's what happens there, which is two arrows. That's how you get this weird, funky thing right there. It closes itself and forms a ring. Does that kind of make sense? So two plus two plus three is seven arrows. Okay, step three, right? This iodine is positive. How do I make it not positive? What's it want? It wants, what's negatively charged in atoms? No, it wants electrons, okay? What's the easiest way to give it electrons? Either form a bond or break a bond, correct? What's more negative, iodine or carbon? Which one's more electronegative? So if it breaks this bond right here, it's going to get all the electrons, right? Would you rather share electrons or get all the electrons? Which one would iodine rather do? Get them, right? That's why it decides to break a bond instead of form a bond with oxygen. So when it breaks a bond, it takes all the electrons and that's why it is neutral right there. Does that make sense? Okay. Since it broke a bond, carbon has less oxygen than normal. So now it is positively charged. So now that carbon is positively charged, correct? So now what does it want? Electrons or no? It wants electrons, right? So we only have two possible targets. As we know, right here, iodine is in a bond to it. So iodine's out of the picture, right? Because that is a possibility. Part of the products that are possible would be iodine bonds, be a minor product. That's why he, that's why he shows you the products you guys don't put it there. So now the oxygen has to bond, but the oxygen's all the way over there. So it's going to have to kind of turn, correct? And as it turns, it's going to attack from the backside. So you do a backside attack. That's why it's wedged. That's why it bonds. Does that make sense? Of course. Zoomies. Good. Okay. Number nine. So this guy right here is what? 
That is a bulky base. So what's it going to do? It's going to form a double bond, right? So we are trying to figure out what this guy is. And he is either one, two, three, or four. Correct? Cool. So he's going to react. Okay. So you notice what's going on here is I either have the scenic mixtures or I have, sorry, I have trans or cis, right? One and four are going to be cis. These are cis. And these right here are trans. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Langley, for giving me a key for assignment that's already 13 days old. <sighs> Yay. I love teaching 115. 115. It's great. Lab. Not lecture. I wish we could teach lecture. Lecture is easier. Okay. So, this guy right here is what structure? Sis? Or trans? Trans. So what do you think this normal one would be? It would be trans. So look at the two trans. Boom, boom. That's what's going on here. If you're trans and then add a double bond, you're going to stay trans. If you're cis and a double bond, you should stay cis. Does it make sense? That's what this is trying to say. You're trying to keep your stereochemistry. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. What's up? You like Yeah. Okay. So this guy right here is going to leave, correct? Okay. So he's going to form a positive charge. ETO is negatively charged. So he's going to want a hydrogen, correct? He's going to want a positively charged. Hydrogen. This is a bulky base, and bulky bases form double bonds, right? It's an example of an E2 reaction. Yeah. So normally, you would form a Hoffman, Hoffman projection, which would, which would form a double bond on the primary or least substituted. This guy right here is a very strong base. So it's going to form a different type. It's not going to form a Hoffman for what the other one's called, but he's going to form that type of projection. Athena, what's the, what's the other one besides a Hoffman? You went over this yesterday. Zaitsev. Whatever, what'd you say? Zaitsev. Zaitsev? Yeah. I hate these German people. Zaitsev projection. Hoffman's much easier than Zaitsev. But since this is a strong bulky base, it's going to form a Zaitsev which is a double bond on the more substituted one, which means it's going to pull a hydrogen from this guy instead of this guy, theoretically speaking. So your negative bond or negative charge is here, and that's why a bond forms there. That's the explanation. That's why I'm trying to tell you It is. This is a bulky base, but it's a strong bulky base. And then it could get through and around. Yeah. Yeah. Because normally you see it with you see it with something like an like a with a NA or a K or something like that, which tends to like neutralize how strong it is. But since it's just by itself, there's nothing around to get rid of the negative charge, it's gonna act really strong and pull hydrogen as much as possible. Okay. That's what's going on. Fun times. Yeah. So it's better to know it's trans, so it's going to stay trans. That's why I tried, that's why I taught you that guy. It's much easier than knowing Hoffman and Zeitman. Just know if it's trans, it's gonna stay trans. If it's cis, it's most likely gonna stay cis. Only time it wouldn't be 
is if you're reacting with some type of, oops. There you go. Athena, yes, you're normally right. If it's a small, strong base, but this one is going to pull the hydrogen off, but not go actually go fetch it. Yes, it's still a strong base. Okay. Okay. Next up is the heat hydrogenation. So the more stable a structure is, the least or the more stable, the less heat of hydrogenation, hydrogenation can occur. All right, so we want to find the least stable. So which one of these is the least stable? The last one is good. This one here is the least stable. Reason being, this guy will not cause resonance to occur. If he moves here, it's not going to, to cause any structure change on those guys, correct? There's no resonance. If this guy were to move here or here, it would push those double bonds, right? So there is resonance. So this guy is the middle. What is this thing? And benzenes are the most stable, correct? That's why this one is three. Does that make sense? Okay. You just give me concerning looks, so I'll make sure you're good. Oh, sorry. It's all good. Okay. Can I just check into real quick? BTCH. Uh, THF, NaOH, okay, good. So, so we have this chemical structure, right? I was just checking to see if it would be important to go up. This guy right here, we're gonna see if we have them and our guy, we do, right? He, change this, it's red, go away. We do. He is right here. So he's going to form cis structure. Yay. So that's what he's going to do. Okay. So we're going to go down. We're going to see how he will. So he's going to, oops, not seven, not nine, not eight, 11. So he's going to form a double bond onto his anti copy call first of the anti, right? So we form a double bond here, not there. So we form a double bond, sorry, a not double bond, an alcohol right here. I messed up. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's hexane. One. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then alcohol. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Here is what the structure looks like without doing steric chemistry. Correct? Because this guy will make steric chemistry occur. He forms cis structures. So he's going to form a cis structure which means, okay. okay. We form antimicrobial cough, serochemistry is cis. So. Is it always cis? Yes. Oops, sorry, sweet wedge too, it is. Because that's what it says. So it says, it says this. Yeah. So one, two. So one, two. 
what in the antimer is that? Sorry, an antimer. What type of um, stereochemistry is that? RS. It's S. So wrong. There you go. It's one. It's S. And that's an answer. Because in theory, it will change. But it's an S. It forms an S in answer. So there you go. Does it make sense what I did? That's why it's S. Does that make sense? It would if it formed a ring. It would lead to a pair of diastereomers if it formed a ring. But it's not a ring. Yeah. It doesn't. That's why you have to assume what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why if you go look right here, that's why he gives you this this one and it shows it forms a double bond. So it forms, it forms the information of an alcohol. That's what's going on. And that's what this and this, meaning this guy right here shows an alcohol is gonna be formed on. This right here shows the addition of a hydrogen. This one on, okay. Got this going? Are you just moving a further away from me, Emily? Oh, charge your shit before coming to study session. Okay, how we are doing, Zoomies? Okay. Yeah, I will. Closest tonight. Okay, 12, what is the intermediate for the following carrier? So do we have this guy in our series of stuff? I don't know, let's go look. I believe we do. Bromine, CL, whatever. Uh, bromine products, bromine, not products. Uh, bromine by itself. No, from a, what's the means? Yeah, right there. So, oopsie daisy. This is what we're gonna make. So we're gonna make this guy right here. So, now we know we're gonna make this guy. We can find the intermediate. All the way down to 12. So what's going on here? So we notice one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's a weird way of doing it. Okay. That's also weird, but I guess one, Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So what's going on here? It's a bit weird, right? But C is automatically out. Just by counting the carbons, right? It's a total rearrangement. That's not what this molecule does. It doesn't rearrange anything, right? So that's why C is out, correct? A is a bit funky because I don't know where this guy came from, right? That right there is not what's going to occur. The double bond is located between two and three. So one, two, three, four. It's also four carbons long, right? One, two, three, four. So A is also wrong too. It's four carbons in the chain. Make sense? It needs to be five. So between, now between B and D. That makes sense what I did. How to eliminate them? Yes or no? Cool. Okay, you okay? Okay. 
Okay. So we're looking at intermediate. So we know both bromines are going to form, correct? Both bromines are going to form. In this case, when it has this, we don't get radicals. One bromine is going to take all the electrons. So one bromine is going to be super negative, and one bromine is going to be super positive, right? It is the positive bromine that attaches to the bonds right here and forms a triangle. That's why the triangle forms there and it forms there. It's interacting with this guy. Right? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Check, check one more thing. So when the bromine forms, you look all the way back up here. Oops, it is. We're gonna go all the way back up to here, erase everything so it doesn't freak you guys out. Ugh. Nope, not high enough. Oops, it is. Okay, we're right here. If you notice, this right here occurs. When that triangle forms, right, one of the bromine is going to attack from the back side and kind of become this, not this kind of, right here is a wedge. I'm sorry, dash, dash, because it's trans. Becomes a dash, right? If you notice, that methyl group becomes a uh, dash, it becomes dash, right? So it comes dash. We look at our guys down here, number, there you go, number D. This guy already is, oops, no, wrong one, wrong one, B and D. This guy right here is already dash. It's not gonna work, right? Because the bromine is going to come to the other side and knock it out. So D is the answer. Because you want the both to be wedged to make them dash when the bromine attaches. Because the bromine attacks the back side here, it's going to act dashed, which would make this guy right here wedge. But this guy right here forms a trans molecule. Right, which would make this bromine, sorry, this bromine a wedge, which would make this guy here a wedge. So we can't have already a wedge methyl group. They both, sorry, a dash methyl group, a dash methyl group. We'd have both of them wedge. That's what happens there. Does it make sense? Attack on the backside. Why is it not? It's not Markovnikov because um, this happens by itself. The reagent doesn't help. All the reagent does is it either makes a positive bromine and a negative bromine. That's all it does. That's what this guy right here does. Helps stabilize what's going on, right? That's what it does. So that's why it's not either anti or normal Markovnikov. That's why. The Makovnikov usually occurs because of reagents inside the reaction, right? Huh? It would be. The peroxide is a reagent, right? That makes it anti. It doesn't really do anything. What well, does? That makes it anti Makovnikov because it's a reagent. This reagent is neither. All it does is stabilize this guy here. So that's why it's not either Makovnikov or anti Makovnikov. It's its own weird thing. So, yeah. Yeah, the chart's very helpful. That's why I want you guys to use a chart. Just either use a chart or you just memorize everything, which is not good to do. Okay, 13, fun times. Okay, good. Do you have this guy? CH3O2H. 
Okay, you did. Cool. So this guy right here is not neither anti or not, but it forms a trans. Cool. So 13. How do you know that? Because it's on the chart. Go to the very top. Very top, very top, top, top doesn't one. All the way uh, here. And I'll erase it. It's right here. So it forms trans. That's why. Make any sense? Yeah. Cool. So it's in a form trans molecules. Go down here, number 13. Which one? Or trans? One, two, and three. Which ones are trans? Two and three. It's two and three because it makes trans. That's why. That makes sense? Because this guy right here makes trans molecules. So it does. It's steric chemistry imposed. It's trans. And both these chiral right here, this guy right here, and this guy right here are chiral centers. So they're going to be two trans of each other. One is cis. So that's why one is wrong. So this one is wrong, and this one is wrong. And two and three are both tra uh, trans. That's why that one's last. So does that kind of make sense? Peroxide included in, in, or products induced reactions of carbon tetrachloride with one butane produces the following molecule. Ugh. Okay. Carbon tetrachloride with butane. So one, two, one, two, three, four, one. Good. So we're using peroxide. So peroxide doesn't tell us anti-macarbic off. So positive charge here, negative charge is going to be here. There we go. One, one, one. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen here? When the chlorine is going to leave, you're going to get slightly negative. Oh wow, that's not that's not all what happens. Something like this above. I don't want to show this. It's very annoying. Great. Fine. Okay. So, 14. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, Chlorine is going to leave, right? Because chlorine's a leaving group. Just one of them's going to leave, right? So when the chlorine leaves, and it's going to want to react with that right there, correct? Which makes this guy positive. It's going to interact with this guy. So you're going to get this weird looking structure that I'll draw in black right here. And you have a chlorine, and it attaches with two here and then a chlorine comes off here all right okay okay mm -hmm. oh i don't like this i'm not saying i do this one because so that's just the answer but i got the wrong answer in my head because that's the answer right there. One, 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 three, 
tetrachloral pentane. So that looks like that's what it looks like. I don't see how that one of the chlorines leave. Unless it makes no sense. The point has to attach. Yeah, no. Yep, no. I don't see this one. I don't see this one. I don't know how this one works. I'm going to skip it just to save us all time. I'll look into it later, but I don't like it. I hate when rings close. Okay. 15. Okay. So, what does this guy right here do? If we scroll the way up, it tells us. What that guy does is right here. It forms a triangle. And it forms a cis structure. <laughs> so, what X would look like? X would look like something like this weird looking triangle. Yeah, that's what X would look like. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then BR, right, by itself is going to um, not form anything. As you'll see, it will attach here and it will attach here. Is it just BR by itself? BR2. BR2 where? Uh, on the machine. Uh, that's BR2 with something with it. Is the thing below it? Uh, that's just oh, CR2. Yep, you're correct. So there'll be trans. So there'll be trans of each other. Oop, that goes away. So they will be trans. So wedge, dash, you're correct. Yeah. So there's the structures. There and there. So we have two chiral structures. And here we have one, two, two chiral structures. So why is a single a chiral part? You sure? Mm, that's why. Okay. No, it makes sense. Okay. Because this also can form this guy too. So this is our Y product right here. What is that considered? If it can be both product one and product two at the same equal rate, what is that? Basically, this guy here is trans. If you add Br2 to a trans molecule, it forms a meso compound. And is meso chiral or achiral? So why it has to be achiral? Wrong, wrong, achiral, achiral, chiral. So I only need three answers just by looking at it. Okay. This is also allowed for a product X because it could either because they're cis, right? So it could be wedges or it could be dashes, right? And if you do the RS, you figure out they're equal parts both. So X is racemic. So X is going to be 
A, right? Because I told you there are two chiral carbons, correct? Right there. And E is wrong. It's not A chiral. So the last one is A. So that's why A is the answer. Wait, so why would it, is that one only, is that one dash and wedge? Which one? Why? The R or what? Yes. So it's going to be equal, it's be both, right? Because it can either be, uh, at least along the bromines are different from each other. It's anything's allowed. So they are equal possibilities of both. So it's miso. I thought if it was wedge or dash, it makes a racemic mixture. Or am I just getting that confused? No, you're correct. It would form. But I forgot where and I forgot why. But I just know trans carbons reacted with just straight up bomi make miso compounds. And miso compounds are a chiral. So I forget why. It's what I remember, because that's what the Alpine review said. Yeah, miso compound. Trans make miso. I don't know why. I just know it is. And like Grubbs told you guys, you guys don't need to know why reactions occur. Just know what the reaction does. So when Br2 reacts with a trans alkene, it makes a meso compound. And meso compounds are achiral. That's why it's A. Okay, 16. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Ugh. So, 16, what's going to happen here? Yeah. What does MBS do? MBS puts a bromine on the most stable carbon, which would be where? Nope, right there, because it's benzylic. It's next to a benzene. The benzene benzylic, more stable than tertiary. So bromine goes there. That's what this guy right here does. What does this guy right here do? That is a bulky base. That is E2. E2 does what? E2 is going to make double bonds, right? Bromines are leaving group. Bromine leaves. Positive charge here. It's going to pull hydrogen. Hydrogens from one of the carbons, right? Our two options are this carbon or this carbon. Do you ever touch a benzene ring? Do you ever touch it? No. So no touch, but no touch benzene. So only one left is this over here. So when the bromine leaves, we're going to form a double bond right there. Is that making sense so far? Yeah. Two is done. What does this guy do? I don't know. Let's find out. All right. He's probably on one of our things. CHCO3. Right here. He is right here. So he's going to do something. Right? And then we have water and hydrogen, correct? So we don't have the water and hydrogen. So we're not gonna be able to protonate something. If you can't protonate an oxygen, what do you have? You're gonna get a ketone, sorry, a ketone, but there's a peroxide. So we're gonna form a peroxide, right? It's making sense so far? You'll see 
right here. Basically, it's going to O add an oxygen. Right here, it's going to add an oxygen. So the double bond was located right there. So we're going to add oxygen, right? Because that's what this guy right here does. He's going to add an oxygen. Correct? So he does, he forms a peroxide right there. So which ones show peroxide being formed right there? Does D show that? Nope, D's wrong. What about C? C is also wrong. It, it shows it, the peroxide being formed right there, which is not, right? So C is wrong. Now it's between A and B. If you scroll back up, you can see that guy right there forms trans. So which one of those is trans? B. So B is the answer. Does that make sense? If I were to add hydrogen and water, what would occur from here is you would protonate this guy, remove the oxygen here, make this guy positive, water attaches, and then forms another alcohol group. That's what occurs, right? Only if this guy is connected to him. If this guy isn't here, we make a peroxide because we don't protonate the peroxide. Does that kind of make sense? Um, when the double bond was formed, how did the double bond leave to add the oxygen? This guy right here, right? So bond breaks, or this guy right here is going to give up its oxygen, right? So it's going to, positive side is going to interact with this side. And since it only has one bond and what's formed not a bond, so it forms a bond with that. That's why peroxide forms. Just know the best way of doing it is just know this guy right here forms peroxides. He gives up his double bonded oxygen to form peroxides. That's just what he does when he's by himself. Move on is okay. okay. <clears throat> so, what causes the double bond rotational barrier? So, double bonds can't rotate, right? Why can't they rotate? What stops them from rotating? Carbon bond to carbon. What that? What bonds that? Yeah, what kind of bond is that? Sigma, right? Sigma can freely rotate, right? Okay. If I were to add this guy right here, correct? Where does that bond locate? In the where? It's a pi bond, correct? Where do pi bonds like to hang out? Not in the sigma, right? Which is the s orbital, likes to hang out where? The p orbitals. So in theory, what actually occurs, they're not really on top of each other. They're kind of arced. And that's what it's not, why it's not considered on top of each other, right? It's more arced between each other. You can see this with models, right? Uh, double bonds tend to be like kind of curved, right? So it's not, well, this right here is false, right? And what type of bond is this? Is it sp3? sp3 doesn't make sense, right? That's for single bonds. sp doesn't make any sense, it's for triple bonds, right? So now it's between this guy and this guy. Hybridization doesn't really occur, it's just how we theorize things work together, right? And that doesn't affect anything because the double bond itself is in the p orbital. When we look at it as a whole, like the whole picture, it's SP, 
but individually by itself, the double bond itself is not an sp2, it's in the p orbital. That's why the p orbital is the right answer. Does that make sense? sp2 only occurs when you've got the big picture. p occurs when you're looking just at the double bond, which is why it says what caused a double bond rotational barrier. It's looking just at the double bond. That's what's going there. Because the double bond is in the p orbital, it's stopping it from rotating freely. It's kind of making some sense. Cool. Yeah. Select the correct IUCP path name for the following compound. Yep. So, where am I going to start? Lowest one for the door bond or lowest one for the bromine? If you notice, they all are three bromo. So, probably that one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So, ten, correct? One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And you notice they're all methyl seven, correct? Doesn't help me. So what's next? Oh, where the double bonds are located. So they're all the same. So that doesn't help, right? Doesn't help at all. No, we don't stand. Because they're all one, seven, seven, trying, 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 right? So all of this doesn't help us. So you made it hard for us. So now we got to look at this guy's right here. We got to look at the basically the parentheses. Make sense? Cool. So so this guy right here would not have. Anything, because he, he only he's only he's only single substitute, right? He only has a carbon coming off there. There is nothing on this side that can branch off. There's no branch on that side, right? So you can't have an E or a Z on him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Eliminated and eliminated. So we eliminated two. Yeah. So I'm looking at. The third one, and we're looking at the seventh one. Yeah. This guy's going up. This guy's going up. What's that? Cis or trans? Cis. How do you say cis instead of cis? Z or E? Z. Z means same, or you can say it same. You want to say the Russian accent. Or a German accent. So it's the same. So three should be the same. So these two are wrong. Yep. What are that was right there? Why? It would be exactly so because this guy right here is bigger, takes priority. So it actually is going to be this one. You're correct. So it's going to be Z E. Wait, why is it E? So, because the way it looks right here, right? It's technically looking at like this. Or, yeah, 
So this guy right here, technically we'd be pointing, pointing down. So down, and then and this guy's pointing up. That's what the structure actually looks like if you draw it by itself, right? So technically it is trans. That's the structure is looking like. I just drew it better and it has it has there. Does it kind of make sense? How'd you picture it? Okay. Okay. Oh, you're right. My bad. That's way better. Yeah. That makes sense, kid. Thank you. Yep. So you look at the, you look at these two. Because you look at the biggest groups. So here's the biggest group. Here's the biggest group. That's why. Because you have two ethyls. So you put the two ethyls, not the two methyls. That's why. Good job. Makes more sense than what I did. Makes sense, Nina? That's the biggest group. That's the biggest group. And they're trans from each other. Yep. He messed up in the key and he said this one. Yep. He scribbled, he scribbled it out so he confused himself. So gotta remember, he makes tests that even he has a hard time with. Yeah. Isn't it fun? I hate this game. He doesn't have to make it as hard as he does, he does it on purpose. So you guys, when you guys get to OCHEM 2, you take an ACS test, and the ACS test is a cakewalk because of how hard he teaches. Grubs, yeah. Or any, all your tests are from Grubs. So how hard he tests you. The OCHEM 2 ACS test is legit a cakewalk. Most students pass it with an B or an A. Yeah. Yeah. He teaches because he teaches at a graduate level, uh, undergrad level. Yep. So if you guys take a grad test, it's never this hard. It's always like the easiest questions on your guys' exams and stuff. That's what they quiz you on. Like, is a structure cis or trans? And it's pretty obvious and stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't like Okim here. Okay. How many arrows do we need? So what's going on here is the bond is moving. So it's going to move here, which makes this guy positive, which kind of makes this guy slightly negative. Not super negative, but slightly. Which is going to form a bond here. So two arrows. You guys leaving? Wow. Fine. Okay. You're going to use this positive charge to form a bond here. This weird, stupid thing right here comes on. This also does something too. <sighs> NaOH is going to pull off one of the bromine and add double bonds. So, actually, how the hell does it form that? One of the bromine leaves, an RA, you form one. So, you move that. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it. Usually they're pretty simple. This one's just more complex than it needs to be. I mean, because what's going to happen, this has to open up. It's got to bring in this carver to form the hexamide structure. And then it's got to make a double bond somewhere. I'm just not seeing how it happens. And I think this is way too complicated for what you guys are going to have on the test, because this requires a lot of arrows. And stuff. The answer is nine. I just don't see it. And of course, he didn't draw any arrows. This one, this is nine. So he doesn't like this one. This one. So he didn't draw any arrows. So 
it probably won't be there. Yeah. When he doesn't draw arrows, it's either too simple or it's too complicated for him to care about. Most likely, it's too complicated for him to care about. It's like I understand it. Okay. Those following reactions makes the same major product. So, yeah. That's annoying. Yep. Well, that's a bulky base. So you're going to form a double bond, right? So you're going to form most likely a double bond right there. Correct? This right here is an acid. Is it a bulky base? Yes or no? Is it one of the bases we talked about for E2 at all? No. So this guy right here isn't going to form the same thing, correct? It would, it would not form that. So one and two are not similar to each other, right? It actually would form as, it actually is as E2, but it's a bit different. If this doesn't stead, it's going to form a double bond right there, I believe. So one and two can be similar. So, what about this guy? Yeah, this is annoying. So, I'm gonna let you know the answer is three and four. I'm gonna show you why with four. We're gonna do a methylene shift. That's what's gonna occur. Once we do the methylene shift, you'll see what's going on. H2SO4 is going to protonate this guy, making this guy right here, whoops, making the positive charge right there. Is that happy? Or it can get happier? We can, right? By doing a hydride shift, or even happier by doing a methylene shift, because we can make the cycle butane to a cycle propane, right? So this bond right here disappears, and this guy forms with that guy. And you'll get positive charge right there, right? Which will cause the double bond to form right there. So that's what four makes. Does that kind of make sense? So the bromine's going to attach here on that guy, and you're going to get bromine attaching, bromine leaving. So then you get a positive charge right there. And then the bulky base is going to form a positive charge right there. That's why they look like each other. That's what's kind of going on right there. this right here is acting just like MBS in which you put it, the bromine on the most stable carbon, which is tertiary, and then it leaves. And then a bulky base occurs and puts bulb on there. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Treat this like MBS. Puts a bromine on the most stable carbon, right? which is that guy right there, right? Because he's tertiary. Bromine then leaves, so you get a positive charge on that guy. And then this is the bulky base, right? Which is gonna form a positive charge and make a Hoffman projection, which forms with the least substituted, which is right there. So that's why it forms the same thing as that guy. Because this guy leaves, leaving a positive charge right there. Bond breaks, bond forms, 
and you get a pentane with a little spout coming off top. Zoomies? Shane, where is the double bond coming from on the H2SO4 one? Where's the bond coming from? Yeah, because I, I understand the methylene shift. This guy right here is causing double bond to form. It's that guy. How do you know that? Because it's the only thing that would make a cyclohexane. Because it has to be an E1 or E2. It's the only way to get a double bond if he's going to do that. Because light doesn't do that. Light doesn't form double bonds. He has to. That's what's going on there. And this would also form a methylene shift, but it would form a methylene shift kind of like that to form a hexane. That's why that one's wrong too. Did it kind of answer your question, Athena, or no? Yeah, I just didn't know that was a reactant you would use for E1 or E2? I didn't know until I saw it either. Because you usually don't use it. You usually use this or a really, really strong base. But that also works. So most likely it's E1 because it's protic. So. Yep, 21, yay. Okay, so HBr reacting with nothing. So we scroll all the way to the top, find HBr acting with nothing, which is the very first one. Fun times. So that's what you get. Ugh. Okay. You bastard. Yeah. We're gonna come back to this, you'll see. I don't like this answer. Okay. But it's worked the same way. Okay. So we add the bromine. Correct? We're going to add the bromine. Positive charge goes here. Negative charge goes here. So the bromine is going to be attached to this carbon. Which one is it not attached to that carbon? So between A and B, right? So the answer is B. The reason being is bromine likes to attack from the backside. So it's going to be that. That's what's going on. That's why bromine likes to attack the back because this methyl group right here technically would be block blocking the bromine. So it has to go from the, around the other side to get to it without being in, uh, stopped or interrupted. Shane, why does the key say C? Why does the key say C? That, I don't know, it makes sense. Stupid piece of shit. Ugh. Why does the key say C? Uh, oh, that's stupid of me. I fucked up, don't send me. Okay, positives here, negatives here, correct? Is that the best place to put the positive charge? That's why hydride shift, that's what goes on, a hydride shift. The hydrogen that was here swaps places with the positive charge. That's what occurs. It's still attached to the backside because 
this guy right here is blocking it. So the Roman can only attack from the backside. That's why it's C. My bad. Thank you, Athena, for catching me. Catch me. That makes sense now? Why? It did say none, right? You're correct. The reason why it has to be correct is because the positive charge pops up on the carbon with the methyl going straight up, right? Bromine's a big atom. It can't attack. It's, it's being blocked by that guy, right? So the only way it can attack is attacks in the backside. Does it make sense? That's why it is a dash. There. Thank you, Athena. Yep. Right now. Zoomies, how are we doing? So now we got to match the compound to the best description. So remember, the bigger molecule has the more, the more carbon has the highest boiling point. Which one is the biggest carbon, biggest molecule? Pentene automatically has the biggest. Okay. Now you need to know the double bonds lower the boiling point by a little bit, right? And then work because they're both, but then we're cyclo structures. Of, structure, cyclo structures, blah, blah, blah. cyclo structures have higher boiling points than their um, normal line dot form, bro like brother and sister, right? So the highest or second highest would be this guy, followed by this guy. Does that make sense? So it was biggest, then it was cyclo, then it was single, then it was double. Zoomies? Shane, I'm sorry, do you mind explaining that one more time? Okay. Does it make sense why this one right here is largest? Um, because it's pentane, which is bigger than butane. The size of the molecule is always be the biggest determination of boiling point. Because more carbons increase the boiling point way more than anything else. Does that make sense? I think, yeah? Yes. Okay. Sorry, my headphones just died. One second. Disconnect. Reconnect. Or don't reconnect. Whatever. Okay. You hear me now? I'm going to assume so. Yes. So, so next up is cyclostructures have a higher boy point than their line dot cousin, correct? This guy is harder to boil than this guy. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. That's why this guy is two and this guy is three. That's why. Because the only difference between this guy and this guy, is this guy is cyclo, this guy is not. That's why it's like that. This popped up with the alkene review. You know, it popped up in the quiz. So you're gonna to have to know boiling point. So a question like this will pop up on your guys' quiz. So I probably remember to do that. So just know the bigger molecule, the bigger molecule, better boiling point, the more cyclic it is, the better it is, and then line dot is the worst. Well, so if you're going propane to like pentane, right? Pentane still wins because it's a bigger molecule, right? Yes, yes, because it's less carbons. More carbons 
always takes priority. We're just comparing these two based off their shape because they're both double bonded, right? One's just cyclo, cyclo, and one's not. So that's what we're doing. How many questions per exam, a quiz? Oh, it's 22. Okay. You guys ready for the next one? Okay. Fun, 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 fun. Nice, nice, nice. Hmm? <sighs> now I gotta go over the next one. Okay. Yay. So we're just gonna go first too. Okay. Still my zoomies with me? Oops, right here. Okay, question one. Okay, we are going to name the structure. So, if you notice, this one's nice because sometimes the bromo and stuff are different from each other, correct? So we still want to give bromo a pretty high regard to it. It's a heavy molecule, right? So the only way we can do it is one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason why we do that is because what's heavier, fluoro or bromo? Bromo is, right? So bad, bad, bad. Does that make sense? Okay. Octane, 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 octane. Okay. Now we have to figure out what double bonds are located. So where's the first set of double bonds? Between two, oops. Between two and three and six to five. Correct? Okay. So good, 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 good. Okay. Next we're gonna look at where they're located. So we're gonna look at this guy right here. Oh, technically. So there we go, right? That ethyl group and that bromo group, are they cis or trans? They're cis, right? So now between E and D. That ethyl group and that ethyl group, cis or trans? Trans. D is the answer. Does it make sense? There is going to be one. There's one step to be up here on your quiz, for example. Because one, one like this is always going to appear on every OCHEM2 exam, and naming one like that is going to appear. So. Don't forget the rules. Okay. Which of the following alkenes would have a carbocarbon rearrangement during electrophilic addition of HBr? So. So, there you go. Positive charge. 
negative charge, correct? Is that going to is that going to form a ring? Yes or no? Not really, correct? Well, technically, this one's out. Part has a ring. Part has a ring. Part has a ring, right? You can't form a ring. You already have a ring unless you have a lot of branching coming off, right? This guy only has two carbons. Well, a ring is, wait, wait. Uh, um, actually, I thought a ring was gonna form. A ring's not gonna form. Uh, oh, da, da, da. HPR. So electrophilic means HPR is being with something, right? So there's some type of stuff with this. Antibacarbicoff, yes, right? Okay. So we're gonna form antibacarbicoff, which means our negative charge is gonna be here for this one, positive charge here, negative charge here, positive charge here, Equal of both, C's out, negative charge, positive charge, negative charge, positive charge. Yep. So, and which one of these is positive charge definitely wants to be um, closer to something? There's two in which it's not happy and it can be way happier. D is one. And B is the other, sorry, A is the other. Because the positive charge wants to become benzylic, right? And this D right here would love to become tertiary, right? So we want to rearrange. Here's an issue. A can't happen. There is no hydrogen to take to flip the two, correct? There's no hydrogen, only hydrogen you can take is right there. And you can't touch benzene, right? So A can occur. So it has to be D is the answer. Because there's a hydrogen over here you can take and you can kind of move things around or you can do a methyl shift. More likely a methyl shift would occur. Number three, blast off we go. Yeah, three. This is the exact same question. Question is the one below, right? Into this one already. I believe we did, right? We did something very similar. There's a difference though. What's the difference between the two? This guy right here was a wedge, right? Now he's going to be what? He's still going to be, be a dash and change the things up. So, and I like how he picks a different answer for some stupid reason. But OH attaches here. We have one. Oh no. Yes, rearrange it occurs. Oh, which is actually here. Methyl comes down. One, two. It should be S, but now it should be R. How the OH get up there? So what's gonna happen is before what's occurring is a blue sky here is anti Karpikov, right? So positive should go here, negative should go here. It doesn't wanna be like that, right? 
So it's going to take a hydrogen for one of them, right? And the most best hydrogen to take, oh, the best hydrogen to take is actually like a right there, right? The hydrogen here, it's actually messed up. So they're gonna do a hydride shift and you're going to get OH. Or you could theoretically also, if you wanted to, take an attack, it can force the backside attack and get this to so get any pair of any antimers. That's what you get there. I'm trying to figure out how I got an S the first time and not antimers. There's probably some difference. Can you explain into. that again? Fine. Okay. This right here is antimer Karnikov, correct? Yeah. So positive would go here, negative would go here. Because the positive would be on the less stable carbon? Yep. It's anti. Is the carbon happy? Is the positive carbon happy? Happy. Yes or no? No. No. Can we make it happy? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. It can. How? We can take the hydrogen that's right here, right? And swap them. Correct? But isn't that a positive charge going to a positive charge? A positive charge going to a positive charge. What are you talking about? We're doing a hydride shift. You're allowed to move things with hydride shifts. Are you not? Yeah. You just carry donuts around with you? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. You're drinking coffee and drinking donuts. It's night, not day. So the OH is going to attach here because a positive charge would be there. Right, Athena? Yeah. Correct? Okay. Is OH a big molecule? Yes or no? It is. So it has to do backside attack. So when you do backside attack, it's going to push this guy into a wedge, and it itself is going to be a dash. And since you're doing that with antimicarbicoff, enantiomers are going to form. Because antimicarbicoff likes to form enantiomers if you're doing weird things with serochemistry. So that's why it's a pair of antimers. That's what's going on there. How many curved errors allowed are needed to complete the mechanism below? Okay, so let's go on here. Four is good. Okay, so what's going on here is boom, right? I see one, right? From A to whatever you call this guy, B. I only see one movement of arrows. Anyone see anything else? Nope. Yep. So you make water as a product, which means you're going to break this bond. I also see one arrow. Correct? Which is what it's going on here. Okay. Switch colors up. So this guy becomes this guy. So what's to occur here is a methyl shift. So this methyl is going to pop off and it's going to replace, correct? Technically it's one arrow. So I believe methyl shifts are one arrow. Okay. 
Now we have a positive charge here, right? And we close a ring. So it means the negative charge from that guy are gonna, is gonna interact with this guy and it's gonna close the ring. So, it's making sense so far? So I believe that's also one arrow. One, two, three, four. Yep. So water can act like what? An acid or a base. A double bond is formed. This water is acting then like a what? A base. It's gonna steal the hydrogen right there, All right? So it steals that hydrogen and then forms a double bond. So this guy goes here and then this guy steals that. So how many arrows is that? That's two. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So apparently I am missing one because the answer is seven, but I got six. So somehow I got less than we did. I would hit these arrow ones because there's always something else I'm missing. Oh, that breaks, that breaks. Most likely it's somewhere here. Oh yeah, that's what happens. What happens here, the bond here has to break and then it goes here because it becomes CH three negative to attach, right? So two arrows here. So it's two, four, six, yeah. So two, four, five, six, seven. That's why it's seven. That way it actually has two because it has to break the bond. We do a methyl shift. That's what happens there. Yep. Fun, fun, fun. Did this one already? We did. This is different. Mm -hmm. Oop. Okay. So last time this guy was cis. We made him trans, right? If he is trans, what's the opposite of trans? So we actually make him cis because a trans turns to a cis. A cis turns to a trans. The reaction turns it, yeah. Yeah, it switches it. So that's why this is A. That is I, thought it this, I thought that reactant makes trans products. It does. If it was cis, if it was cis, it would turn the cis into trans. But since our um, reactant was trans, it turns the trans into trans, and the opposite of trans is cis.
that's just what it does. Yes, that's how I view it. Because this guy always flips the stereochemistry, right? It makes trans cis and cis trans. That's what he's trying to show. Because if you notice, all the molecules we have up here, right? They're what? All these methyl groups. All right, they're not really cis or trans, correct? Because there's, they're technically tri substitute. And you can have cis and trans with tri substitute. So they don't help. So just know that guy flips your stereo's chemistry. So what if it was a trans? Then it would make it, it would keep a trans. It would still be trans. Yep, because cis keeps it. Because cis means same, right? Trans means different. So a trans reagent changes the orientation while a cis reagent keeps it the same. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if your if your reactant is trans and your reagent makes something cis, it's gonna be trans. Because reagent is cis, which means same. So it keeps it the same stereochemistry. Right. If your trans and your reagent is trans, it makes it cis, because trans means opposite or different. So it changes it. It makes the opposite of what the, of the reactive was. Yeah, fun times. That makes sense, Athena? Yeah. Okay. We were to number six. It's the P double bond. Bada bing, bada boom. That's what causes it. Technically, single bond, double bond. This makes no sense between these two, but the double bond occurs in the P orbital, not the S or SP orbital. So that's why D is the answer. Okay. Seven C, seven, 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 seven. Okay. Okay, um, what's gonna happen here? Double bond breaks, right? Okay, is this Makarnikov or anti Makarnikov if the OH is here? Makarnikov, right? Yeah, that too. So positive charge goes there, correct? The, oh, then the water attaches to there. So I can get that guy, correct? Okay. C and D are wrong because that is an intermediate, correct? I have to have the, the H come attack to form something, right? That's what's going on there. Does that make sense? So C and D say there are no intermediates, but there is an intermediate. So next thing I look at the next two. Okay, how many steps are in A? A is two, A has two steps. How many steps does B have? There's three in this one. Technically I skipped a step because we always skip the step because it's so obvious. The bond breaking is an intermediate step. This is 
an intermediate step. That's why there's three. Yep, because you're breaking a dough bond. You are losing stability, right? Temporarily speaking, because you're breaking a bond. Because that bond has to break, right? Yeah. So that's what you have to overcome. To overcome it, because what is it, does it want to be in this form, or does it want to be? It would rather have a dough bond, right? The dough bond is stable for a long period of time. This guy right here makes a sigma bond stronger for like a microsecond, second, correct? Yeah. So it would rather be in this form than this form. That's why B is the answer, because it does that. OA detaches, and then we depronate it, and it goes all the way down. Because when you deprotonate the OH, right? Because the OH is protonated, right? Or, yeah, when I have water, is this guy happy? Yes or no? No. But when the other water comes by and it steals the H, right? It makes the alcohol happy, which means it's lower energy. So this bump right here is where that happens. So the water steals the H. So that's what's going on. So stable, a little more stable, a little more stable, most stable. That's why this guy right here is stable. Does that make sense? Zoomies? Which piece below is the intermediate of the free radical of HBr two uh, one butane. So. When HBr interacts with something, right? We're going to get a radical of one. Thought that would help us, not gonna help us too much. Okay. So we're gonna get a radical, right? Is the radical one gonna be on a primary or a secondary? A radical wants to act just like a cation. So it prefer to be benzylic, allylic, tertiary, or secondary, if it's a last ops option. So the radical wants to be on a secondary carbon. Does that make sense? This is how radicals work. Wrong, wrong. Because the radical is not on a secondary carbon, right? So this is an intermediate. So if we formed a radical, bromine gets one, and then hydrogen gets one, right? So which one shows half the intermediate being complete, A or C? C shows the other one, because it's before the hydrogen radical interacts with that guy, right? That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. They're trying to find the intermediate. Okay. A is on an intermediate because nothing's ever happened yet, correct? Yeah. So C is, yeah. Which is kind of stupid because you can also technically argue A is two, right? But bromine likes to attach to primary carbons instead of tertiary, or sorry, secondary. Because when it breaks off, yeah. I got myself. Yep. So. Okay. So. Bromine leaves, correct? 
positive charge forms, right? This making sense so far? Okay. Where is the double bond going to take place? With an E2 reaction. Is it going to take place with the benzene ring, with the methyl group, or right there? What do you think? Where do they all take place? They take place in the middle one, right here. So bond forms there. So that's where the bond forms, right there, correct? It's kind of hard to make this out because he did it on purpose. Is that a wedge or dash? That is a wedge. What is this right here? It's also a wedge. So, he wants this to occur. So, it would be B. For some reason, he says D, and I don't know why. Oh, the here's why. This guy right here does the opposite stair chemistry. E2 always does, it always inverts stair chemistry. So this becomes wedge, this becomes dash, this becomes wedge, this becomes dash. Someone posted something. We are in version two, Bryce. Uh, Quiz two. Yeah, that's why the answer is D, because B and D are opposite, pretty much. Yeah, it inverts this guy right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, first guys first is number one. Is that going to protonate anything? Yes or no? Does number one protonate anything? No. D and E are out. Correct? Make sense? D and are out because these are not a good leaving group. You have to protonate them to make them good leaving groups. Correct? Yeah. Okay. This guy right here, the HGO, right? THF and heat, that adds an alcohol, not alcohol, sorry. It adds an O group, right? It adds an O group. So bad, bad. Now, which one of these is different? A, B, and C. What's going on here? B, bromine leaves, bromine leaves. Positive charge, positive charge. Does that work? Yes or no? No, it does not work, right? It can't make a ring, so between a and C. Nope. That guy cannot form a bond right there. We form a bond at that guy right there, which is this guy right there. So the answer is C for that very reason. And that's how I'd approach the question without memorizing what everything does. You can go look at it, but it won't help a lot because usually you don't see these guys with each other. So, what times? Do you mind going through that one more time? Okay. 
this guy right here makes it up on, correct? Right, Athena? Yes. Okay. D and E are out because we have to make these guys water to get rid of them. Right? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. D has a problem. If bromine leaves and bromine leaves, we get two double bonds, right? And we've never seen a ring close with two double bonds like that. So B is out because it makes no sense. So now we're left between A and C, right? So where does, see how, see how this bond right here forms with oxygen right there? Correct? You see that? Mm -hmm. That's where this guy is located, right there. It doesn't form with that guy. It forms right there. That's why C is the answer. That's the best way to approach it with the least amount of work. Got it. So here we're talking about alkene reactivity. So double bonds are strong, double bonds are stable, and double bonds are attacked by the nucleophile. That's not true. Only lots of is B. It is not the pi bond, it is the hydrogen that are attacked by the nucleophile. And those are usually an S bond. And nucleophiles usually don't attack double bonds by themselves. And like I said before, this positive negative sign does make them really reactive because the loss of pi bond does strengthen the sigma bond temporarily, which allows reactions to occur without the, without the formation of the double bond right back to each other. Does that make sense? We already, already did 12, so I'm going to skip it because I already, already did it. It's the exact same, I believe. The answer is B. It's going to be between um, B and C. Oh, God. Who is this? Who's texting me at this late? I gotta go pretty quickly because the computer's gonna shut off soon. So I gotta go pretty quick. Okay. With this guy with 13, um, since we form this structure right here, oh, this, this guy right here, hint, hint, wink, 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 wink. This guy appears on your alkene practice. The exact same one as the alkene practice one. So this guy definitely is gonna appear on your quiz. So I'm going to skip 13 because I already did it on the alkene review part two or part one. Okay. Okay. Um, this one we also already did. Yeah, we already did this one. If I can go over it again. Okay. So with this guy right here, this guy right here is going to, well, it's going to be that different. So I'll go over this one too. It's a bit different. It's going to protonate that guy right there, which is going to make this structure positive charge, right? This allows me to do a methylene shift where I break this bond, take this guy and move this guy right here, and I will get a positive charge connected to that guy, or technically. Positive charge. Oh, look at the positive charge. It's a little bit off. It's right there. 
and then a former double bond, I believe, right there. They're right there. Double bonds can be formed right there or right there. You have two places it could form. Only one forms, but you have two places. So that's what two does. Um, yep. Okay. This bromine is going to attach right here, and you're going to get some really weird things that occur. I don't know what one would make. That's going to make something weird. I believe at least in like something like this. The so double bond is located, but it still has an OH molecule because the OH doesn't leave because nothing protonates it. So that's what one would give you. Two would give you bromine goes here, bromine leaves, and then that occurs, which would give you this. So actually, yeah, I figured that's what you get right there. So. Those guys are those guys with each other. So there we go. So the answer would be D, two and three. Interesting. Makes no sense. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so a little quicker because we gotta leave. Um, okay. This right here forms MBS right here, and BR is right there. This guy forms a double bond. Or double bond right there. That leaves this guy forms a triangle structure. It's just what he does, and it's always cis. So you will get wedges or dashes, which means 15 should be what? 15 should be A. Why does he say B? No, that's wrong. This is right. Because it even says so on the key, they form cis. Yeah, that forms cis. So he did something wrong there. So the answer is A, he said B for some reason. Reason I would argue with him. So how do you know it's cis? Because JZ, because Oh, here's why, my bad. It makes it cis, right? So I believe if you put the double bond here, oh, that's why, Never mind. he's right, he's right. This guy right here is trans, so it keeps it trans. This guy acts like a cis molecule, so it keeps things trans, my bad. Because it's a cis reagent, so it makes it trans. Sixteen curved arrows. Okay. One goes here, and then this methyl group to attach that guy. So you get one here. So you get a positive charge here, negative charge here, which forms a double bond. Those you two arrows. Double bonds form there. Negative charge is there. That's how you get the OH right there. Because yeah. 
The formation is open, I don't think counts. I think it happens automatically. We'll see. I believe so. We'll find out. Chlorine leaves. So chlorine leaves. This guy forms a double bond. And since this is positive, this guy's slightly negative. They form a bond with each other. So that's one. So right there is three. So I get this guy. So that's five. Yep. And then you get one. And then negative charge forms here. And that's what forms that. So yes, you get. 16 is, let's see, eight. Yeah, I know. So it's probably the last one I'm gonna do because the cleaning people are coming here real quick. So yeah, the answer is eight. So that's eight, two, that's four. Yes, you're correct. So Katie, you are correct. The formation of the double bond does count. So that is four. So two, four, so that's six, that's eight. So yeah, the formation of this double bond right here does count, so. Okay, that's what I'm probably gonna be able to do um, because I can't too much longer. It's gonna take about an hour or so for the video to convert. So I need to do it right now. Mm, talking to the zoomies because they know what's going on. Okay, so I am gonna have to call it quits right now. Yep. So, any questions before I hang the call up? No, thank you so much, Shane. Of course. Hang up. You guys have any questions for me? Nicole? Allison? No, thank you. Of course. Bye. Bye. Okay. Stop recording here.